you guys doing tonight? That was far too much of an introduction. I'm not that great at most of the things that I do. I, uh, excuse me if I am lagging a bit in my thoughts. I drove up from Los Angeles today, um, which was just a huge pain. But uh, one of my friends was like, hey, what are you doing on Thursday night? Do you want to go get dinner? And I was like, uh, I actually am driving up to my high school to give a TED Talk. And she was like, oh, a TED Talk. Aren't those supposed to be inspirational and influential? And I was like, yeah, they are. Why? And she was like, well, you went to school there. They know you, right? <laughs> um, and then I said a word that I'm not supposed to say on stage to her. Um, but anyways, I am here. I figure I'll tell you guys a little bit about myself. My name is Effie. Uh, my favorite part is backstage. I was like, hey, what if I need to use my phone? And one of the guys went, hey, if that's your style, do whatever you need to do. So I am going to use my phone for notes occasionally. We'll see what happens. My name is Effie. I am Greek. I went to college at USC. Uh, I graduated with a BFA in acting, and uh, then I graduated and went on a bunch of auditions, and I was like, I'm not making any money. <laughs> this isn't working for my adult life. So I segued into writing, and I did a little bit of stand-up comedy. Uh, currently, I am a writer's assistant for a television show, which is awesome. I've worked on a few shows. It's great. But really, guys, I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm I graduated 11 years ago. I'm three glasses of wine deep telling jokes in my high school theater right now. Um, which, <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Which, by the way, in any other situation that isn't a TED Talk is grounds for being escorted off campus. <laughs> Mr. Brookhauser, there's a weird lady in the theater telling jokes to an empty audience. That's okay, sweetheart. Just laugh and walk away. She's harmless. She's been here for 50 years. <laughs> um, truth be told, I felt a little bit strange about coming here tonight and talking about my successes, things that have worked so well in my life, because uh, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. We're adults, but like none of us really know what's going on. Um, and this is, this is where I start looking at my phone, because I'm, I'm overwhelmed with all the love that I'm getting from the room. Um, <laughs> so basically, I, what would you say? I, I love you. That's John. I know him. He's like a grandfather to me. Um, <laughs> so essentially, uh, basically, I feel like I can't tell you guys what it's like to be like a successful adult because once a week, I have a complete mental breakdown. And that's, and by the way, that's on a good week. On a good week, I have a complete mental breakdown where I calculate all my bills and all the money that I owe to credit cards and all the money that I owe to student loans, and then I collapse in a pile on the floor going, you're not successful, you'll never make it, everything is horrible. Quit, quit, quit. Um, I'm a, and then you're a parent. You're a parent. This is, am I getting heckled in my, in my school theater? That's ridiculous. You stop it right now. Um... Jesus. Um, anyways, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted in my high school theater. Um, uh, really, adulthood is where all your insecurities come for a personal fight club to make you see who can cry first. And, and I cry fairly often just looking at where I'm at in my life. But I'm going to be brutally honest and I'm going to tell you that none of us know what the hell we're doing. Like I said, it doesn't get easier, you just get better at looking like you know what you're doing. <laughs> so you're essentially faking it, you're trusting yourself to figure it out. When I came here a couple months ago, Mr. Brookhauser, Kevin, I'm sorry, I'm still not used to doing that with teachers. Um, Kevin was like, tell me a story about a brief challenge you took on, despite feeling unprepared. And my brain was like, literally everything you've done in your life up to this point, adulthood sucks, quit, quit, quit. Um, and as I thought, and then I told him like a story that wasn't, I was like, oh, and one day when I got a job, it was hard. But as I was driving home, I was like, everything that I've been unprepared for, I've gotten through. Which means, to some extent, I was prepared for it, just not in the way that I thought that I would be. And really, oh, someone went, mm, and I, I agree with you. That's exactly what I'm trying. I'm very smart. Um, <laughs> um, basically, 
life isn't a cut and dry formula where you can apply all these things that you've learned. Like there's, there's so many variables. You can't just like plug and chug and be like, that's the answer to what I needed to do today. And so it, it's impossible to be prepared in the way that you think you should be in every situation. This is why I'm reading on my phone right now, not prepared in the situation that I should have been prepared for. So like, let me give you an example. Do you remember in elementary school when you were like, I'm learning, everything is great, look at me. Look, clap your hands if you feel like elementary school actually prepared you for anything in your adult life. That's, and you're, you're lying, don't lie to me. What was it, was it when you guys made volcanoes for a year with baking soda and vinegar? What did that teach you, what lava was made out of? It's not baking soda and vinegar. Or was it when you wrote in cursive for an entire year and then you like left third grade and you were like, oh, the, they only wrote in cursive in 1776 when they were signing the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> no. And by the way, I'm not saying that York isn't, you know, preparing, but wouldn't that be horrible if I was like, York isn't preparing you for your life. <laughs> Do you know the college prep school you go to that you pay a lot of money for? It doesn't work. Uh, that's not what I'm saying at all saying that it prepares, you have to figure out how it's preparing you. The things that you learn aren't so cut and dry that you can, prepare, you can have them in your real life and go, oh, that's what this situation means. I figured it out based off of the fact that I know the definition of this or I know how to speak Spanish. For example, uh, I was in Ms. Torg's psych class. I remember a lot. Yeah, where is she? She's not here. No, but we're all in it. We all love her. Hi, is she there? Hi, can you see me? Hello, Cammie. Um, oh, you're right there. I was, I was told you weren't here and that's BS, whoever told me that. And you're gonna get a strong talking to after the show. I was in, I was in Miss Torx Psych class and I remember a lot of things. The amygdala, the, this is not, we're done. This doesn't, does it work? The amygdala, the, it's okay, I'm loud enough. The prefrontal cortex, the, the guy that shocked a bunch of people and everyone was like, that's not moral. What was his, it was Milgram, Stanley, see, look, I remember those things. It was great. Thank you. And that's the end of my talk, bye. No, um, <laughs> so I remember those things, but it wasn't those things that necessarily prepared me for my future. Like, I know what narcissistic personality disorder is, but when one of my bosses looked at me and was like, the sodas in the fridge aren't cold enough. <laughs> I didn't know how to handle not slapping her upside the head, despite I knew, despite the fact that I knew she had a mental disorder. Um, so <laughs> what I'm saying is, our experiences inform us in more ways than we can comprehend. So trust that you can figure it out. Trust that you'll know. Uh, and I'm gonna leave you guys with this story of my foray into writing for television. So uh, I live in LA. I was working as a server at a restaurant, which I hated. I every minute of because I would walk and serving in LA isn't like serving in Monterey it's not like you walk in a small neighborhood everyone's like great good to see you Karen it's very much like you walk over to a table and you're like hi my name is Effie so great to see you tonight what can I get you and someone's like diet coke <laughs> diet coke and I don't care how you're doing today get me my food I hate everything about you and you're like that's a and I'm not the kind of person that handles that well I would sit there and I would be like I asked you how you're doing you tell me how you're doing, and then I'll get you your stupid diet coat. Um, so I, I was having those experiences constantly, and I was like, I need to get out of here. I need to stop working here. This is horrible, because uh, I'm probably going to go to jail soon for killing someone. Um, I didn't do it. Um, so, so I remember putting this note out to my friends, and I was just like, hey, I need a job. I don't care what it is. I need a uh, preferably in the, in the entertainment industry, please let me know if you have any leads. That word was really hard for me to think of just then. I'm sure you noticed. Um, so I got a call finally from one of my friends, and she, uh, I picked up the phone. I, don't even, I didn't even really know her that well, but I was like, all right, I'll pick up the phone. Picked up the phone, she was like, hey, I have a job for you uh, as a writer's PA. And I was like, I don't know what that is, but sure. And she went, um, it starts tomorrow, it's like a three week gig, our writer's PA is going to Japan, and I was like, great, good for Japan, get him out of here. Uh, and, she, and she went, um, but if you make the right connections and you prove that you know what you're doing, then hopefully you'll get pulled in and you'll be able to move up in the industry and you won't be working in the restaurant industry anymore. And I was like, sign me up, I don't know what this job is, but I'll do it. So. 
I said I'd show up the next day. I got, it's, I don't know what's happening, but we'll just, we'll do it. We'll pretend that I'm either doing this or this, because it's loud enough either way. Um, so I walked in the restaurant the next day and I was like, I got a job in Hollywood. I quit. I'm never taking people's orders for food ever again. Bye. And I left. And the next day I went into my job as a writer's PA where uh, everyone gave me their lunch order to go and pick up. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, that's not what I expected to happen. Um, granted, there were a lot of other things that I learned. I wasn't just getting lunch. I'm very important. Um, and I was doing a lot of things, but the point is I wasn't prepared for it. I had no idea what I was doing. And I was terrified that I was going to screw up. But if I had never taken that chance, I wouldn't be where I'm at now, which is on stage in the theater at York School. No, um, <laughs> I'm doing really well, just so everyone knows. Um, but my point is, if you don't take those chances, if you don't pretend that you know what you're doing, if you don't trust yourself to know that you have the information based on prior experiences, that you will be able to figure it out, then you're not going to get there. You, you have to jump. It's like being thrown in the water when you don't know how to swim, which my, which my dad did, by the way. He was like, there you go. Bye. We hope you don't die. Um, and I didn't die because I figured it out. You'll, you'll figure it out. Everything that you're doing, you will figure out. So uh, continue to do, do that. that. Continue to fake it till you make it to the next level. Bye. <laughs>